Well, someone doesn't want to get this. This is difficult to get this clip, so enjoy. Um, it, Easter goes on for a while, but it's really telling on where he's coming from. And then uh, Pierre Poliver, he, um, well, he wins. <laughs> Boom. You will, and I know there is some confusion over this. Uh, you will recall I stated uh, on Mr. Uh, Mr. Polyev's point of privilege that there was a procedural technicality uh, with his point uh, and the motion following his point. We suspended uh, for a few minutes and I did not get complete clarity on, uh, on really what is an unusual development to a great extent related to the fact that this is a new session of parliament and I'll get to that in a moment. The meeting was not adjourned as some implied, uh, uh, but uh, it was uh, suspended by the chair. And I just want to turn to uh, House of Commons procedure and practice, third edition, page 1098. Committees, uh, quoting committees frequently suspend their meeting for various reasons with the uh, intention to resume later in the day Suspensions may last a few seconds, several hours, or span even more, uh, or uh, span even more than uh, one day. End of quote. On the question of privilege, uh, when there's uh, some people have asked me, how can uh, how can you interrupt uh, a motion and go to uh, to another motion? Uh, so I'll read uh, when a question. Uh, uh, when you're discussing a motion, the question of privilege does take precedent and uh, the chair has an obligation uh, to, uh, to deal with that. Uh, the, the chair under parliamentary uh, procedure must uh, hear the point. And I'll turn again to House of Commons procedure and practice, third edition, page 1060. If a member wishes to raise a question of privilege during a committee meeting, or an incident arises in connection with the committee's proceedings that may constitute a breach of privilege, the committee chair allows the member to explain the situation. The chair determines whether the question raised in fact relates to parliamentary privilege. If the chair determines that the question does relate to parliamentary privilege, the committee may then consider presenting a report on the question to the house. The report should clearly describe the situation, summarize the facts, provide the names of the people involved if applicable, state that, that there may be a breach of privilege and ask the house to take such measures as it deems appro uh, appropriate. Ordinarily, a presentation of a report to the house is a prerequisite for any question of privilege arising from the uh, proceedings of committee. Uh, Mr. Uh, Fraser did raise a, uh, a, a point uh, from uh, parliamentary procedures during the discussion, uh, but he didn't challenge the uh, chair on that point. Uh, not, in the, not in the rules, uh, but running through my mind at the time uh, was the problem where a point of privilege uh, could be used to, to uh, jump the queue on motions. Uh, you'll recall at the beginning of the meeting, uh, I had stated that the order of motions uh, would be Ms. Zerowitz's uh, motion on parliamentary on uh, uh, pre-budget consultations. Uh, and uh, we operate under a standing order of parliament there that we must do those in the fall and report uh, by, by December. That's an obligation for the committee. I had spoken with Mr. Julian and I told him I would uh, have his uh, motion dealt with uh, in uh, second at the committee as the uh, proposals came uh, forward. Uh, and his motion was uh, on privilege and documents as well. Uh, and Mr. Polyev's uh, staff uh, emailed me to say that that uh, Mr. Uh, Polyev would be uh, putting a motion. They didn't say a point of privilege. Uh, Although that was so, so that and that was the way the uh, the motions had uh, had uh, came to uh, to me. My thinking was to get to the pre-budget consultations in process. Uh, so there are staff, the clerks, uh, and others uh, could start to the the process, line up witnesses and meetings, 
uh, while we continue to uh, to discuss uh, these uh, these other issues. Um, and finally, uh, why the uh, the the motion I said was uh, there was a problem, a technical procedural problem, uh, really relates to that we're in session two of the 43rd Parliament, uh, and there was pro prorogation on uh, session one. Uh, on prorogation, the House of Commons Procedure and Practice, third edition, page 975 and 6, reads, as soon as Parliament is prorogued, parliamentary committees, with certain exceptions, lose uh, their orders of reference, mandates, powers, and members, and all studies undertaken by committees lapses, end of quote. Resuming uh, also in House of Commons Procedure and Practice, third edition, page 977, uh, resuming under the topic, resuming proceedings in a new session. Standing and joint committees that wish to resume a study they intended themselves can do so by adopting a motion to this effect. Quote, if occasion arises uh, and they consider it appropriate, committees that have the power to do so may readopt orders for the appearance of witnesses or the production of papers. It is quite common for the House or committee to adopt an order stating that evidence heard and papers received in a preceding parliamentary session be taken into consideration in the new session uh, and and end of quote. So that uh, that leaves us with the current motion from uh, Mr. Polyev uh, on his point of uh, privilege. Uh, it, it does technically not have the evidence to make his point uh, because the evidence, there isn't a motion in it, and there hasn't been a motion to bring that evidence forward from the previous uh, session. Uh, therefore, the the speaker uh, could kick us, <laughs> kick it back to us and say that the evidence isn't there. I see Mr. Julian shaking his head, uh, but uh, that's, that's, that's the facts of the matter. We all know, those of us that are on the committee, what it means. Uh, but technically, uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's where we're at. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go with uh, a couple of options here. I'm going to uh, rule the current motion as written out of order, and ask Mr. Polyev to bring it in order by dealing uh, by bringing by putting a uh, an amendment or bringing it back. Uh, with uh, with the proposal to bring forward that evidence uh, from uh, from the uh, from the previous uh, committee, so I would rule it out of move. order. Ed I would rule it out of order as uh, uh, as written, uh, and uh, go and so I think the options are these. Uh, Mr. Polyov can uh, take the motion back sit in position three and we'll go back to where we were at on Ms. Zerowitz's motion first and then come through the line and deal with his motion as amended. Uh, he could challenge into the ruling uh, uh, of the chair and we'll uh, see where that goes and we would have to deal with it uh, in that uh, in that re respect uh, then. So I'll give my members a moment to think about that. Uh, as I said, uh, 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 I, as written, uh, I have to rule it uh, out of order. It can be fixed, uh, and I would suggest to Mr. Polyevit uh, bring it back later in the meeting. Point of uh, order, Mr. Chair. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, I uh, would uh, simply, uh, given that I continue to have the floor, uh, as I was, uh, I had the floor when, we, when you suspended the meeting. Um, uh, you've now suggested an amendment. Uh, I have uh, accepted that suggestion, uh, and therefore the uh, s evidence that you have required is uh, considered uh, amended into the motion. Uh, and uh, so we will uh, we can continue taking a speaking list on uh, that um, 
on if, that premise. If, if we if we if we get there uh, the next no, one. No, I do. Speaking, I, uh, sorry, no, I do you, have just the chair. No, no, you don't. I, I, Motion I, to I challenge said, the chair. Motion to challenge I, I, the chair. Good. Motion to challenge the chair. That that's fine. That's what I was going to suggest. You had to challenge the chair to go that right. way. So uh, I, the, I have, not I challenge the chair. It. Challenge challenge the ruling of the chair. Uh, and I'll ask the uh, the uh, the clerk to uh, take a vote on the ruling of the uh, the chair, Madam Clerk. Okay. Shall the chair's decision be sustained? No. Mister <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Fraser. <laughs> Yes. Ms. Jerowicz. Yes. <coughs> Mr. Frejisketos. Yes. Mr. Gerritsen. Yes. Ms. Kutrakis. Yes. Mr. Poliev. No. Mr. Falk. No. Ms. Jansen. No. Mr. Kelly. No. Monsieur Saint Marie. No. Mr. Julian. And uh, no. Mr. Chair, we have five yeas, six nays. Uh, no, I think it's the other way around. I think you have five nays and oh yeah, okay, yeah, five and six. Yeah, that's right. Uh, okay, the ruling of the chair is. Uh, uh, is uh, is overturned, uh, and uh, that makes me uh, procedural happy that we're uh, back in procedure. Uh, Mr. Uh, Polyeb, uh, the next speaker on the list was Miss Jansen. I think we were going to her, but I do believe you had uh, you had the floor, and you should also move the appropriate men amendment at the appropriate time <laughs> when you get a chance. Floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, so. Um, if there is any confusion about what documents uh, the committee is referring to, um, I am going to have my staff uh, send a specific uh, reference to the clerk electronically, uh, and we will give that uh, email a uh, sorry that uh, uh, body of evidence a an official name uh, that is identifiable uh, and recognized by the committee so that there is no confusion about the documents in question. Um, as uh, you know, Mr. Chair, um, committees can receive evidence a variety of ways. Sometimes it's through documentary submission, sometimes it's through testimony, and sometimes it's just through uh, acknowledgement of what's happening in the world. So for example, a committee can publish a report and include in that report uh, observations made uh, from uh, what's in the public realm. It doesn't act actually have to be uh, formally submitted uh, in the pr process of the committee for the committee to be aware of its existence. Um, and uh, so I will make sure that you have uh, a reference to the documents. As you correctly pointed out, we all know which documents we're referring to. Uh, we all, we, we all know which documents we're referring to. So um, on that basis, uh, we will clarify. And I now uh, cede the floor to uh, Ms. Jansen, who I believe is next on your list. Uh, Ms. Uh, could we, re before you start, uh, Ms. Jansen, could I, uh, could I uh, have people, uh, uh, we'll establish a, a speaking order uh, here. Um, uh, and so you can click on your, your speaking order uh as we uh, as we roll along here and the clerk can notify me who's next maybe by email so miss jansen the floor is yours uh yes what i was trying to say um i was very concerned about the fact that the this exact process happened at the health committee we were we we made the exact same type of request we wanted to get documents that were unredacted and then would move to the law clerk for redaction. When we received those, what we actually got were, um, again, documents that had been redacted by staff uh, that had so much missing. It's how, how do we as parliamentarians do our job if, um, and the, the interesting part about that as well was the fact that um, the argument against originally getting any of the documents was that the staff in a pandemic were incredibly busy too busy to collect up documents for the, the, the committee. So 
when we saw that the staff then had been tasked with not just collecting the documents, but also redacting them, we were very shocked. And to have seen the way that these documents were uh, redacted uh, for for this committee was absolutely shocking. I mean, it's almost like you did it in health and then you did it, you doubled down in finance. So um, I, I would say uh, again, yesterday, very, or sorry, last week when, when I was speaking and I was interrupted, uh, I was shocked again by the process. I, I think that I've been elected to come to this place and uh, to, serve, to serve the citizens in my riding. And um, it, it, again, shocking to see how uh, we are cut off. The information is not given. We're, we're basically told, sorry, you have to stop. You have to stop, we, we're, we're done here. Uh, so uh, at this point in time, I think um, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to yield the floor for the time being because uh, I'm trying to wrap my mind around how it is that we find ourselves in a place like this and uh, uh, it, the, our inability to actually be able to see any of the information is, is very shocking. So I, I yield the floor um, to my colleague, uh, Mr. Polyev. Uh I think uh, Mr. Polyev is not next on the list. The, the next on the list is uh, my list thus far is uh, Mr. Uh, Julian. Well, that is the first conservative win um, since prorogation. A pretty good one. Now, okay, so it all went through. Then um, for three and a half hours, the liberals have been stalling, you know, filibustering, bringing up motion after motion. And um, because this has been a week, the footage of this is it, it's all screwed up. It's seven days of footage. Anyway, we won't go into that. This definitely is going to carry on um, for some time. And MP Julian um, from the NDP, he looks... Uh, perturbed as angry as i've ever seen him you see he's a you know very gentle kind of guy it seems but uh, he's angry and and here he comes up here and um there's a lot more so stay tuned for the rest of the weekend and watch this clip it's outstanding yeah they, i simply disagree uh with with the ruling that you you gave mr chair with respect i find you uh largely fair in what is often a difficult environment but the reality is uh there is no doubt this is a breach of privilege and given that every single member of this committee voted for uh, the ndp motion in july asking for the documents uh every single member should be supporting this this, uh, this motion of privilege. If, if uh, the committee had ruled otherwise, if the committee had uh, upheld your, uh, your decision, Mr. Chair, as you know, I had a privilege motion as well that had been vetted by the uh, table and I would have brought that forward. So that, that would have, uh, we, we simply can't uh, sweep this under the carpet. We have to deal with this. Uh, we have to pass this this motion uh, for uh, for many reasons. Uh, the fact that it is out, outrageous that over a thousand pages of documents that we asked for uh, were wholly uh, or substantially uh, redacted. In other words, censored, so that uh, a committee, a democratic in a democratic uh, parliament, uh, has actually been denied access to information that the committee has requested. Uh, it's pretty outrageous, and that's why the motion of privilege is so important. Uh, secondly, the fact that every single member of this committee agreed to the motion means that we have a duty to uphold the responsibilities that come from making that decision as a committee. And, and thirdly, Mr. Chair, the speaker has asked us to bring a report back. And, and this is something that uh, we cited a few days ago, but bears repeating. The reality is uh, the, the, when the speaker ruled, he said uh, that the, uh, the Committee of Finance has the ability to rule and come back, bring this back uh, to the House of Commons. For the moment, he is not able to rule when this was raised in the House of Commons prior to the committee being reconstituted because he said it's not possible at this point to know whether the committee is satisfied with these documents as provided to us. And so the speaker says, uh, I don't know whether or not the committee actually agrees 
with the substantial censorship that took place. We have a duty as a committee to report back and clarify for the speaker that we are not satisfied with over a thousand pages being substantially or wholly censored. And so we have that responsibility to pass this motion and to move on. Uh, I, I believe uh, firmly, Mr. Speak, uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, that the, the speaker uh, will see this as a, a clear violation of privilege. Uh, and we have a responsibility to move forward quickly on this. I, I hope to my Liberal colleagues who seem to want to uh, delay a decision on this matter last week, that they will uh, move promptly so we can have a vote and refer the proper report to the speaker so that the speaker can make the ruling and the House of Commons can make the decision about privilege. This is an important matter. We shouldn't be spending a lot of time on it. We should be moving forward. Thanks, Mr. Chair.